Hey everybody, my name is Chris Sorgatz. Today I'm working in my shop, getting ready for the World Hovercraft Championships 2010. So today I wanted to talk with you and show you around my shop a bit. Goal today is I'm working on a prop for my thrust engine. Okay, so today I'm, uh, I'm working on props. I've got my uh, existing F1 thrust prop. It's all carbon fibered. I used it in uh, 2009 racing season. This is a, uh, an all carbon fiber prop with a, a real lightweight cedar core. So uh, weighs in about four pounds. It's 54 inches with a, a 60 pitch on it. So it's a, it's a cool, cool deal. What I'm starting today is making the core and I've got uh, all my uh, wood uh, laid up and I'm gonna take and uh, start gluing it down here pretty quick. So I'm going to do some tedious work here and lay this uh, different st stacks of wood out and I'll come back to you when I've got it all set up. And Okay, blocking is underneath. I've got my blocks and my uh, all my clamps lined up. And then, uh, so my next step is I, uh, I'll take and I'll wet all the surfaces of the wood down. I use a polyurethane glue, soak and saturate everything, block it up real quick and this is how I get a really solid and lightweight piece of wood. I'm just putting things together. I'm soaking the wood so that I can put the polyurethane glue on it. So this glue that I'm using works really good with really saturated wet wood. More humid is better. <clears throat> we'll get on to the polyurethane glue. I use Elmer's polyurethane. This is the best stuff in the world. I think it bonds real well. It expands when it dries. and uh, Better in water than any other glue I've ever used in the market. So I'm using solid oak blocks. These are really rigid, non-forgiving, so I can make sure that I get really good distribution on the clamp as I'm chucking it all up. Whew, that'll make the forearms burn. All right, now I wait eight hours and uh, I'm clamp it and start the grinding process. Okay, I'm back with you. It's uh, midnight here in the uh, Eastern Standard Time Zone. So uh, my glue's dry and I'm going to start pulling off these <clears throat> uh, clamps to get this thing all ready for square up and carving tomorrow. Hi everybody. It's uh, day two in uh, Chris's Hover Shop. I've got the, the prop out of the uh, jig and it's all glued up, clamped up. I'm starting to do the layout work on it. I've got a lot of line work that I've got to draw all over the prop. <clears throat> Hey everybody, it's uh, day four prop building, uh, May 5th, so I'm using consecutive days right now. And I've got the prop all sanded down, um, I've put the template together, I've got my lines all marked out, so you can see I've got trailing lines, top face lines, rear trailers, and I've got all these these layout lines set up so that I can start cutting the prop. Hopefully you can see You 
see right here I've got the uh, the relief cuts slid all the way down and they hit along my <clears throat> my trail and edge line there what that does is that uh, breaks up the wood so that I've just got small blocks I don't have the long fibers like you normally would in cedar So here's a little better angle. I got my mallet, my chisel, and it's just a slow, tedious process. I always said this sport was all about doing things I like. Well, woodworking is something I love. So yeah, it's slow and tedious, but I don't mind doing it. It's relaxing. Doesn't make too much noise. I can do this in about three, four hours. I'll have this all chipped down and ready for a final sand. We'll come back when I get it all worked out. Okay, one of the reasons that I like to use the sawzall or the crop, the reciprocating saw, is that when I put these lines down, so the saw is a flat face, and I've got a top line and a rear trailing edge line. And as I cut through, if I watch my lines, both the front and the rear, then I get a nice flat cut inside. And as I chip this away, each of these lines become a gauge, the depth gauge for me, at which point I have to chisel down to. So they break the wood up for me, they break up the long grains, and they also give me a guide as I'm chiseling this face. And that's pretty good right there. I'm down to, I've got about an eighth of an inch uh, from the surface, from the final surface I'd like to have, and with this cedar, it's pretty soft wood, so that'll grind down really easily for me. So I'm going to flip the jig around and I'm going to go on to the next face. Okay, so we're on to phase two, and I've drawn some lines on here so you can see what little material that I actually want to keep. I've got a top and a bottom flat surface there, and so this top triangle will come out, and then all of this wood will come out. This prop will get quite a bit lighter when I get all finished. Now I'm just finishing up the last surface. I'm going to cut through this, and uh, I'll be done with the chipping. Yeah, you can see we're getting down there it still looks pretty rough we've got the final shape and uh, it's about 10 30 my time we're gonna wrap it up for the night it's uh, night five I'm starting to get a little crazy it's uh, it's sanding time and I <laughs> So the trick for me is that uh, those saw lines that I made about every inch and a half here, if I, if I cut those deep enough to these two lines, then I've got a good gauge plane all the way along here. And so that then I can take and I can grind down. And as soon as I remove those lines, I know I'm at the right depth. And the next step will be for me is to just plane those surfaces off. I'll use a, a more of a finished sander. I get a nice flat profile here, and then it's pretty simple. I just take and I ease my edges and put a nice profile on there. I'll get a nice NACA airfoil. I want to go scary thin. The, the tip on this prop, the thickest part of the cord, cord is going to be about three-eighths of an inch thick. It's going to be really, really thin and going to have a very good profile to it. So uh, I'll see you on the other side after I spend a couple hours here. Uh, day six here in uh, Chris's prop shop. I've got all of my faces good and flat. I'm just getting ready with the belt sander to cut in my fillets. I want to make sure I've got a nice good blend between the root and the tip. And uh, I'm going to keep everything on flat. And then the, once I get this fillet cut in and finished, I'm going to start putting the profile in here. So.